Hi everyone and welcome to the bonus episode for episode 425 of Conversation Street and this week we're doing a classic character profile on Alan Howard. Oh, Alan Howard. Alan Howard indeed. Uh, Not a main, main, main character by any stretch of the imagination but somebody who we've been watching a bit of on our 70s Corrie DVDs over the past uh, couple of months or so and, you know, as the second husband of Elsie Tanner, he's, he's, should be respected. He's, he's up there. Yeah, and also the real life and husband yes, indeed, the real Alan Pat. Browning, who plays in the real life husband of uh, Pat Phoenix. I just said that as as the re, uh, the second husband of um, Elsie Tanner, that g- gives him a bit of credence. But actually, um, Janet Barlow, Ken's second wife, maybe doesn't deserve to be quite on such a high pegging as Alan. But also, that's her third husband because she was married when she was in the show. Then she got married to Steve Tanner, and then she got married to Alan Howard. Was she was she married before Steve Tanner? Yeah, that's how she had babies. Oh yeah, maybe. Oh, what I do you mean don't... maybe? She was married to Linda and um, Linda and Dennis's, Dennis's dad. Dennis's dad. Was she? Yes, she was. But okay. he turned up and he wanted a divorce. Oh yeah. Remember, and Nina was going, "Who's that man going into her house?" And she's like, "It's my husband, actually." Yes, you're absolutely I right, Gemma. Once again, I bow to me. your superior Coronation Street I can't knowledge. It. I can't believe it. I forget these things. Right. Well. Ken's third wife, Deirdre, she is up there. <laughs> but we're not talking about them today. We're talking about Alan Howard, who was um, in 256 episodes of Coronation Street back in the 60s and 70s. The character was born on the 23rd of April, 1924. He had three brothers. Um, named. He, oh, Elsie was his second wife. When he came into the show, his wife was called Dorothy, but then he, she was later referred to as Laura. So it was one of these things. It was she, like... Um, like with Ivy, she had about three names, I think, for her also, first husband before they settled on Bert. But so, also sometimes back in the old days, people would go by their middle names, wouldn't they, sometimes? Sometimes that has happened. So let's My say Laura that. Dorothy Howard was Alan's <laughs> first wife. Yeah. Um, he had a kid, Mark, and uh, he was born around 1952-ish. And Alan first um, trod down those cobbles on the 1st of December 1969. Um, making his final appearance on screen on the 16th of January 1974. But he did come back in voice for an episode on the 20th of July 1977. How did that work? You will find out because we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Interestingly, because this ties into the fact that Pat Phoenix ended up marrying Alan Browning, she recommended him for the role because she'd... She went, I like that man for my husband, stage one. Basically, that's what it was. She, she did my fictional husband. She didn't like the idea of Elsie having another boyfriend. And she, this is a quote, I can't remember where I got this from. Um, it, it was, I promise, a purely professional decision on my part. Although I must confess, it idly crossed my mind that he was an attractive man whenever I watched him on the television. But selecting him for my screen boyfriend was not a romantic affair. It was simply that I admired the man's acting tremendous. Yeah, mm. yeah, 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 whatever, Pat. So he'd been um, in a show called The Newcomers on BBC where he was a lead character there. So he was wellish known before Coronation Street, before he was catapulted even further into stardom um, in his role as, as Alan Howard. But yeah, she basically fancied some guy off the TV and said, can oh, yeah, he be my yeah, husband, please? He had, he had um, quite a theatrical voice, didn't he? And a, and a big presence. He did. The have character a big... didn't do very much. No. But the, the, but Spoiler I... alert, this isn't going to be the most gripping of character profiles, but we, we do intend to get through most of the regular characters, all 373 of them. Um, yeah. So uh, you're right, his, his voice was, was certainly... Um, Theatrical. Booming, yeah. So th- this is the this is the history of Alan Howard. Anybody that's interested, um, there's a great Corypedia article on this. It's it's quite in depth for somebody who was in it so little, and uh, so I got the majority of this information from there. So the idea was that he was a very. I just say it's quite what? funny that he was. It's like it's like the writers are accusing Pat Phoenix of being so absent-minded that they literally had to cast a man. As her husband, who became her real life husband, also had the same name in character and in real life. Like they, they were worried that she would call him by the wrong name. So they're like, just call him Alan. Yeah, whatever. whatever. Otherwise, she, you know, she she would just call him Sugar Tits. Or something. <laughs> um, a sickly child was Alan when he was younger. This is Alan Howard. That is not the not the, uh, the actor. I'm sure it was a fine, strapping young lad. <laughs> um, he he shared a room with his three brothers in Gateshead, and they all went down to work in the mines. But I don't think he was able to because he was so, so Ill. Ill. He but he did join the navy 
where he served with Len Fairclough. So this is the, ah. the original link to the, sh the street before moving to Leeds. He worked as a mechanic and then a garage owner. So he had his finger in many pies, really. And on the street, his character was a big kind of entrepreneurial chap, wasn't he? This Who is was the thing. I never really thought of to keep him up appearances. as being a mechanic, even though he owned the garage. Mm. And the thing is about the, the, the garage on the street is that even though the people that work there own it, I don't really think of them as business owners. I think of them as mechanics first and then business owners second. What, like Kevin, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if where, that's where, Yeah, Al Alan was just... He, yeah, he was, he was a bit but of I a guess Mike I also, Baldwin, pre-Mike Baldwin, I guess. I but not as charming. the same way about... Unless you're Pat Phoenix. ...the people that work in the shops as well. Like, I don't think of them as, oh, you own a business. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, so he got married to this Laura woman at some point, Laura Dorothy, whatever. They had a son in the early 1950s, um, but they, they didn't really get on. It was a bit of a marriage and convenience that, you know, that they ended up staying together. But it didn't last very long, 10 years odd. They split up in the 60s and Laura stopped him from having any contact with Mark. So that was, that was what they'd, uh, the ideas they drummed up for him before appearing on the show. Gemma. In 1969, he appeared on the show. He buys a flower shop in Weatherfield, and this was being run by Elsie Tanner, and it was owned by Dave Smith. He was a bit of a wrong one, wasn't he? He was. He was the one that um, Blanche ends up going down to Kenilworth with. She, she has a bit of a thing with Dave Smith, doesn't he? But he, Dave, I know we're not talking about Dave, but he really struck me as an interesting and yeah, very dodgy character, like a not a dirty old man type, but you know, a dodgy like a, yeah. gucky that, but, but yeah, inexplicably. Lusty. Um, attractive to some of the younger ladies on the street. Yeah, because it's cash. I, I also think it's weird that Elsie was a florist. Um, yeah, I know. Time, and she seems to be one of these, one of these characters who's slightly homeless as far as work goes because you don't. She she works. She ends up working in the factory as well. Mm. But you don't see a lot of her in there. Is she mostly propping the bar up at the moment? Yeah. Or she is ha um, lassoing. Susie and um and Gail, and Gail yeah. in her house that's where we're up to in 79 yeah so anyway she's been running this flower shop and then um he buys it buys it but he converts it into the salon because there's no no money in flowers at the moment it's all about no, the hair he wants flowers but everyone's got hair apart from some unfortunate people like Fred G <laughs> <laughs> um so everyone fancies him but uh, Elsie tries to hide it. There's, a bit, there's definitely a bit of magnetism between the two of them, isn't there? I remember mm. when he came in and started having a go at her about the flowers, and she's like, ooh, blah, 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 trying to defend herself. <laughs> then he, Al Alan hires Elsie's nephew and niece, Bernard and Sa Sandra. I think it's Bernard, not Bernard. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably not Sandra. Saint Bernard. Either. It's probably Sandra. Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> as hairdressers. Uh, alongside Valerie Barley. So. Bernard and Sandra, Sandra found me. They were bit nothing characters, weren't they? Pack. They were totally. Although we, we can say that because we've only been watching small snippets each year. They could have been really great. But yeah, Bernard and Sandra did not make they an impression on They could have been the most us. popular characters of that year and then but they tried to re renegotiate their contracts. They asked for too much money. <laughs> so they had to cut them. Um, yeah, so, so they all work there. Um, then he arranges to celebrate the new year with Elsie. But he stands her up because he wants her to know that he is not interested. He was in doing a bit of playing hard to get at first. I'm not he? interested in anything serious with you. Well, they were both a bit like that because she was like, "Oh, well, I don't really fancy you," but she does, and he was like, "I don't want to." Yeah, I don't want to um, have New Year's Eve with you, but she actually, but he actually does as well. So it's kind the... of a bit like Len and and um, and Elsie, Elsie as but well. They yeah, actually got together. Elsie likes that kind of thing, doesn't she? She really is a flirt. Yeah, she's a, she's a total flirt. That's half the fun of it. That's a bit in love. Yeah, oh, that's my favourite kind. They they end up hooking up, but they have a double date with Len Fairclough and Anita Reynolds, who I shrug at the name of. I don't know who Anita Reynolds is, but yeah, that uh, um, evening together uh, leads. Alan and Elsie to reveal their true feelings for each other. <laughs> oh. This is when Bill Gregory turns up and he's an ex-boyfriend of Elsie's. He proposes to her as well and he'd been in the show earlier, you know, in the early 60s as well, I think. So when he's popped the question to Elsie, that made Alan think, blimey, I better get my skates on and propose to her myself. We need to... Oh, no, no, I don't think he proposed to her. He said, come and move in with me. We need to move things to the Scandalous. next level. He doesn't agree to marry her. I think she, she likes the idea of being married to him especially after bill gregory's turned up and got down on one knee so when he says i'm not going to marry you love but to be fair he's he has only known her for what two three months at this point um 
Well, back in the moved day, fast Michael. Back in the day, didn't they? Don't forget that um, Hilda and, and Stan got married. They got married in six, seven days, like, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, they split up over this, uh, this disagreement about his commitment towards her. Uh, he moves away. He sells the salon back to Dave Smith. Can't keep away from her, though, because by July, he's back in Weatherfield again with a proposal, with a ring. She turns him down because she's like, no, you, you had the chance earlier. But then she has a change of heart, marries him later that month in one of the most bizarre pre-wedding sequences I think I've ever had I've ever had on Coronation Street yeah they they were wandering around gardens weren't they with um she had a cowboy hat on and they were yeah playing flamenco music in the background and it was like um it was like a music video like I mean, I'm, like I'm it saying was an advert I, for like pear soap or like a shampoo or something. I might be over exaggerating it in my head, but I see it being at least a five minute sequence. It was very long. With no dialogue and no. just really soft Vaseline screens. Yeah, but, everything was really soft focus and, and yeah, they were just, just walking at around the gardens together, with this weird trees. music. It's like, oh, utterly it's bizarre. Heavenly. If you haven't, we talked about it on the 1970s discussion we had like a couple of months ago. If you haven't seen it, just. It's, it was watch it quite just to... wonderful to watch, to be honest. It, yeah. was, it was um utterly ridiculous. Mm. So at this point, um they had to the Coronation Street writers had to put an explanation about why this big time businessman and Elsie Tanner would continue to live on Coronation Street, you know, this backstreet terrace. So they had to have him have some money worries or money problems. Um Coronation Street tradition, as we know. So Ray Langton discovers that Alan owes a lot of people a lot of money, and his creditors pressure him to settle up. He um, almost the only gets... the only type of businessman Coronation Street ever has is an unsuccessful one because they're <laughs> the most interesting. Very true, or at least somebody who has money worries at some point in their life. Yeah, otherwise everyone. they're just not fun. Because I'd say that Mike Baldwin was fairly successful. He did lose it all at one point, or more than one point probably. But he he was a he always clawing his way back, as did Alan, because he almost declared bankrupt. He says, "Look, if you give, uh, give me three months, I'm going to sell off all my bits and bobs, like his car, his salon, his his garage, all his properties and everything, and and then we'll be sorted." All right. So he, he could talk the good talk, and then they agreed. So he's now got no money, forced to live, Poor slummit Elsie. in number eleven Coronation Street with Elsie. He gets a job working as a mechanic for Billy, which I imagine he did not. Um, really come down yeah, yeah quite when as considering he used to own his own bu- he's used to owning his own business it's now to be you know to have to answer to somebody a bit of a humiliation for him um at one point he walks out because he gets told off he he agrees to fix um ken's car on the cheap for a favor and and billy has to tell him no you're not allowed to do that i'm afraid you're yeah. not the boss you do what i tell you oh, dear. end of the year mark shows up so this is alan's um son that he had with his multi-named wife um <laughs> elsie's never even been told about this person no she was so kind to, of a bit of a surprise to her yeah uh, th- he, doesn't he sh- he, did he show up on the shop or she something come, no, he remember. comes around the house and she's there and he's saying hello i'm i'm alan's son and she's like oh jesus christ yeah i think i think he might go to the shop first and ask whether where elsie lives and then yeah you're right she turns up so, he so alan has to house. explain himself but, to her yeah, but alan isn't there at the time no he he's turns not up, and so not. elsie's there like would you like a cup of tea wasn't she? Mm, mm. So Mark um, tries to mess things up for them by saying that Elsie's having a having it off with Len. He, he just tries to cause trouble, basically. I, th- I can't remember why. It's probably the old, you're not as good as my mum sort of situation. I don't know. Although he's 18, maybe he's a bit too mature for that. But anyway, Alan does not believe Mark and ends up sending him on his way. And that's possibly the last... Is that the last we see of him? Or does he appear another? Maybe the next year. I don't remember. But Mark is also a bit of a flash-in-the-pan character. 1971, Gemma, over to you. Alan has to run the garage when Billy moves away and he it's a bit of a, a promotion for him. He gets 15% of the profits and £5 a week There you extra. go. He's, he's back on the treadmill. He's working his way up. Nice one. He catches the attention of Janet Reed. So this is Janet Reed who ends... Mullet. No, no, that you're thinking of... Um... Oh. You're thinking of Norma Ford. Yeah, I hated the Norma mullet. Ford. Janet Reed is the person who ends up marrying Ken. Yeah, that's right. I hated Ken's her as well. Ken's actual wife. I did not like Janet and I didn't like Norma. She, he, he's like, oh, no, I can't. But then he gives into to temptation because Elsie keeps nagging him. I think this is... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, listeners, but I think this was when he was supposed to have a thing with Irma and then when Sandra Goff does a disappearing act, right, yeah. it gets rewritten that he's he, he has a thing with Janet Reed because she gets brought that's back right. into it. yeah. And um, 
Yeah, Elsie's nagging him, but you know what I always say. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I don't listen. Yeah. I <laughs> it's say, my birthday week. It takes what I want. two to make a nagger. <laughs> He's not interested in anything serious, he just wants an affair. So when Elsie finds out about it, she sees her off, and this is the very cool scene when she escorts her down to the Rovers and lets everyone see her buying a drink and then yeah. tells her to sling her Sling her up and don't come back again. Um, how he how did that work out? And then Mark comes back. You wondered if he came back? Oh, yeah. And I can tell you exclusively that he does. I, did, I wrote these notes six days ago. I can't remember everything I wrote. <laughs> They're for a bit of a rubbish Christmas because they invite Mark to come down, and Elsie does not like this. Um, and they're already fallen out because he they wanted to go to a castle. So she wanted to go and stay at a castle over Christmas. Wanted to go to a castle to test his driving. I mean, his eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> Almost made a... Also, castle... Kind of relevant for a political Driving eyesight there. test, yes. Um, yeah, so he had to work over Christmas. So he was supposed to stay in a castle. He had to work. He cancelled that plan. And then he invites the bloody kid round and she's not really that into it. He walks out on Elsie because she keeps moaning about how in- inadequate he is. <laughs> but he has to return and sleep in the garage because he's got nowhere else to go. They have a really up and down, tumultuous yeah, kind of relationship, do, do Elsie and Alan. And as we were watching it on the DVDs, a lot of it, I was thinking, why, why did they do this? They're clearly not suited to each other. And I know that sometimes that can be good to watch, you know, fireworks between couples and everything. But... I, I just didn't feel the chemistry, which is quite ironic considering that the two actors clearly had a lot of no, chemistry I, I in the married off screen. I, they felt very comfortable together to me. I thought that they had a very... Comfortable? No, what's wrong with that? Well, that just feels boring. Oh, which sorry, is like... what do you get out of this relationship? I suppose I shout at you a lot. Yeah. Is that exciting for Ooh, you? Yeah. You must enjoy it. it. Again. <laughs> you must enjoy it for married for 10 years. <laughs> so 1972. Um, this was this is his last year on the show, I think. So Elsie um, invites Alan back and he's like, okay then. But what he doesn't tell her is that he's borrowing two and a half grand off of his ex-wife to buy the garage from Billy. Billy Walker. Billy Walker, exactly. That is so much money. In that is a lot of money in 1972. Yeah, garages are expensive things. Fortunately for Alan, when Laura shows up um, over because of this money thing, she gets on with Elsie. And um, even to make things better for even better for him, she says that I'm dropping the loan. Don't worry about it. You don't have to pay me back because I'm getting married to someone else and I just want to move on. So God, win win for Alan. Whoever there. this husband is needs to tighten the purse strings a bit for this flighty woman <laughs> giving away two and a half grand to random people so all things are looking good for alan and Hooray. there's also a little That's weird fine, scene and stop the profile we finished almost almost Everything finished ended well for <laughs> alan and elsie one thing that doesn't go well for him in 1972 is that he agrees to play guitar in a strange street band at the community centre. Did you remember that? They, no. they had Ernie on the piano, I think. I can't remember. It was just a real weird ragtag of middle-aged well, yeah, men. Kept... And Ina Sharp was coming into That's the community right. centre saying, stop and playing like, music too loud. And they were like, trying to rehearse. And she's like, no, this is rubbish. Yeah, but it, it was rubbish. For It was supposed to be for a community centre concert that ends up not going ahead. So that was <laughs> sucks. Um, Alan gets a um, job working for Jimmy Fraser in October, which basically involved him selling used cars and looking after the Capricorn Club, which was the place where Rita used to sing. And as part of his work with Jimmy at the Capricorn Club, he had to sit there and schmooze with young bits of skirt like Deirdre Barlow. And I think that's the first... Well, sorry, Deirdre, what was she back then? Hunt. Hunt, you're right. You are good at this. Thank you. My 37-year-old brain has started to lose this information. It's dripping out of my ears or something. I've been longer than you have. I'm, so, I'm, I'm good at it now. <laughs> yeah, I think this was Deirdre's first appearance in, in okay. a little booth in the Capricorn Club with, oh, right. you know, with, with Lechie Allen next to her, oh, I, I, I think. Or maybe Lechie Jimmy with Lechie Allen. Anyway, he starts having massive drinking problems yeah, in 1972. An alcohol- One time, um, he, Elsie comes home and finds him passed out on the sofa in the... Um, the, the oven's on or something so yeah there's a pan on the hob that's it and yeah he, he things go pretty bad for him and um this is at the time this is when elsie so pat and alan were, were getting married they got married on the 23rd of december that year that's my dad's birthday but there you go um in 1973 oh yeah the, the 1973 was when was his last year 
Oh, no, he goes, he keeps, sorry, I he said keeps earlier, popping in and he out. keeps popping in and out for a bit. She gets offered a warehouse job in Newcastle, so they go together away, yes. and Alan keeps coming back every now and then. Yeah, his his contract was still up, wasn't it? Because so Pat Phoenix... No, his contract was still was going. still going, I mean, but yeah. Pat Phoenix quit because she wanted to do stage acting, yeah. but Alan's contract was not over, so he kept coming back to appear every now and then. So like he came back and like sold sold the garage to Billy and stuff like that. Yeah, and they, they, what they were actually doing, as well as getting married, was um, they went on a 43-week stage tour with a play. That seems like a really long time. Pat and Alan treading the boards Light. called Gaslight. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's nearly a whole year. Mm. So 1974, um, the, the, they continue to row the Howards. Elsie ends up leaving him, returning to Weatherfield on a trial separation. Um, so this is th- this is definitely post Alan appearing on the program. She she comes back, doesn't that's she? Right, yeah. Walking down Without the street. Him. That's that's a great return to the street because she she uh, she gets to her door and then she sees Ina's um, curtains twitching, doesn't she? And she's like, "Hey, I'll see you home." Yeah, love that, love it. Um, so Alan ends up writing to her, but she doesn't reply because um, right, yeah. at the time, um, Alan. Browning wanted to return to the street or he he asked whether he was returning he had a chat it was him and Pat and Bill Podmore were talking about her returning and and Alan's like am am I coming back too and Bill's like nah (laughs) sorry probably you're too boring as a character um in 1977 again all off screen he ends up having an affair with a young employee she goes to see Elsie to say look can you divorce Alan please because I want him I want him I want to make him an honest man and she's Elsie's like, well, Alan asked to ask for himself. Well, but yeah, I'm mean, not going to fight it if he does. But I'm not having his young bit of stuff coming and ask me yeah. to, yeah, divorce she can, him. He can ask me what himself. So she goes. Elsie goes up to Newcastle again off screen. They they have a laugh together. They have a good time. Her and Alan. But um, to make it clear exactly where the land lies, he says, look. Can I can I have a divorce? Oh, no, he writes no, to he her writes afterwards. To her. We see that we saw that scene where she gets the letter. Yeah, and this is where Al's Wasn't is, it on her birthday? Alan Alan his voice reads out the letter. Oh. So this is his final appearance vocally in nineteen seventy seven and, and Elsie's like, No, please change your mind. But no, she wants to marry this this woman and and he says He no. wants to marry Elaine. He wants to marry Elaine, yeah. So he says, No, I'm not I'm 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 not staying with you. I'm marrying Elaine. See you later. Yeah. And they get divorced. And and that's and that's the end. That's the end of Alan. And and tragically, he ends up dying like five years later in real life. The actor of um after of liver failure because he, like Alan on the show, um was a, bit of, was a bit of an alcoholic. So yeah, tragic end to the to the actor. It really was. And another story of a Coronation Street actor that you know had a sad ending. Yeah, basically, there's there's, there's more than. More than a couple, sadly. Um, I yeah. Well, there there are many different types of people, aren't there? And you don't really concentrate on the ones that had nice, no, no, nice lives. Um, I, as everyone knows, I've been reading Pat Phoenix's autobiography, and obviously she mentions Alan from time to time, but I have not any juicy goss. No, the thing is, a lot of it is just anecdotes about her professional life. Yeah. She doesn't really go in very much to relationships or things like that. It's quite interesting mm. how well she manages to skirt those. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, I, Alan did not make a good impression of me at all. I quite liked him. It's, it's been, you know, it's been a good six, seven, eight weeks since we've watched an episode with him in. But already I'm kind of forgetting about him. He hasn't. He hasn't made an impact on me. I, I was interested to find out about him. I mean, a lot of Elsie Tanner's history has been brand new for us, watching all these old episodes. Mm. But I, I don't know, there's just something about him that didn't click. Whereas Steve Tanner, the husband that we saw her getting married to, the American guy, was was lovely. Yeah, it I felt really... like a kind of like, oh, he's such a dreamboat. When she married to Steve, it was like, she's she's had this past, She's she's been a good kind girl during the war, she's had more men than you've had hot dinners, but finally she's found her Mr. Right, Steve Tanner, going to have a lovely life together, yeah. go off to America, but then it turns out he's a he's a massive git, starts, you know, abusing her, so she comes back to, in, to, to England. But I, I just feel that that relationship could have worked. It wasn't necessarily... Elsie Tanner settling down is a bad thing because I was very willing to have her to accept her settle down with Steve. It just as soon as we got to see the you know the drudgery of of everyday life with her and and Alan, she lost a bit of spark for me. 
I didn't mind them together. I thought it. I thought it. They were a good match because I think Elsie, Alan, Alan was like a sort of a grand man who had fallen on hard times, and he he always kind of gave this air of like a decadent past, but sort of having to live in this kind of humdrum present world that he'd found himself in of his own making, mm. and and Elsie also has her own problems, isn't she? Like for all the fun that she gives she's she's made many mistakes of her own mm. and uh models through and she's not perfect she's got a fiery temper and gets gets herself in trouble all the time and i felt that they were pretty well suited to each other because they were both sort of um flawed heroes like working class i see what you mean i see what you mean i i just didn't find their scenes particularly electric i don't to think watch. we got to see a lot of their they're good scenes though no i mean it, when he kept that that scene where he came home drunk and she had a, a massive go at him yeah, yeah. that was quite exciting and, yeah. and also that as you said that the thing when when he had an affair with janet that caused that that led to some some awesome scenes that that was a really strong episode I a lot thought. of it was elsie though wasn't it it, it wasn't yeah. alan yeah he was he was just a, a nice enough guy but but i i, I would say fairly bland sadly mm. Uh, do, do you think that she, I mean, what did you think about the fact that her getting married do you think that she was better as you know a lone wolf or do you think well I would said you to like you to today, have seen her down? or the other day I can't remember this week because we like I said we've been watching the 70s and I do honestly think that Elsie's gone off the boil and since she came back without Alan she seems a bit like she's lost and floating around and yeah post return Elsie is, kind of is not the same relevance because She's living with Susie and Gail, who were the bright young things of the street, like the teenage, you know, mm. sexy characters who would have romances and, and do fun she's things. She's kind of like their mum, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's just like, hey, kid, how you doing? Like, you know, and uh, like the wise old aunt almost. Mm. We don't see anything of her at work apart from one episode when Ernest Bishop gets it get mm. in the face with a shotgun. And... Um, I would like to have seen more of her at work. I don't really know much about her, but most yeah, I mean, of they may have shown more. They just haven't put them in the DVDs saucy that we looks watched. in the in the pub at people, mm. uh, and and I I don't know. I wouldn't have said that Elsie is a character that only works in a relationship, but looking back on it, it does seem as though her best scenes and her best eras were when she was with you know um, Steve or. Or Alan. I don't know. Or, 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 I mean, I would say that the best partnership that she had was with Ina. Some of those early scenes. Ina and Len. Well, yeah, exactly. Len is the other one, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, but... because now Len is married to Rita. Yeah. And Rita is very careful to maintain the boundary between Len and Elsie because I think she knows that if, if Elsie snapped her fingers at Len, I think he would uh, run off with her. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Rita was a bit. I of think an I think they did well to keep them apart and just keep Hello. that that sexual Spark. tension simmering. Yeah, <laughs> so that, that's that's kind of it for Alan. Really, um, he made Elsie change her name for a little bit. The, the, when yeah, she, when they married it. her off to Steve Tanner, they picked a character with the same surname so that she wouldn't have to change that iconic surname. I never I never really thought of her as Elsie Howard. No. I don't know how many other viewers at the time did, but often then when soap characters get married, it takes me a long time to think about them and their new, their new surnames, like, you know, Sarah Barlow at the moment. Well, yeah. You know what I think about I know what you think name. about changing your name. But you know, I, n <laughs> I never considered Elsie to be Elsie Howard, so it was good when she, uh, she returned to being a tanner, I would say. Um, yeah, that, that was Alan. He was all right nothing exciting he didn't even have that many great friends because because he hung around with the likes of billy walker and and he was another one that i, billy I don't walker get is on another with. sort of a missed opportunity for me he, he just felt like they thought oh i really like um len and uh ray let's just make a few more guys like that and alan and and billy were sort of on the periphery of the the lads club weren't they and jerry booth managed to fit in well with that lot because he was different mm. But Billy just comes across as being a bit of a, a bit kid. of a slicky, sleazy ducker yeah, diver. Yeah, he was. He was too slick. Yeah, he was. I, I don't. He, I don't he like was slick, him. But he actually didn't actually achieve anything. Yeah. So when when um, Alan was not in scenes with Rita and he was with his friends and his workmates, it, it, again, I, I wasn't interested particularly. Scenes with Rita or Elsie. Sorry, Elsie. I mean, yeah, yeah. So 
Yeah, there he was. Go. He was good. I think he and Elsie were good. You you enjoyed I him more than, more than I did. did yeah. I was not sad to see the back <laughs> of him. But yeah. now hopefully we've filled in a little gap in any listeners' knowledge if you didn't know about Alan because he doesn't get talked about much, does he? No, he doesn't. But like you said before, when we were talking about at the beginning about iconic spouses, well, spouses of iconic characters who perhaps have, have, have been forgotten. Mm. Because um, Ken's been through a lot. Elsie got through a lot. Yeah. There's quite a few people who've been through many. I mean, the, the fact that Elsie got married three times, yet she's never at all looked back on as part of a, a double act, is she? No, she is As you not. get some characters, like Hilda, it's, it's Hilda and Stan. And Hilda was strong enough to be, you know, a great character on her own, as was Stan. But it's Hilda and Stan. It's, it's Jack and yeah, Vera. But yeah. Elsie is... Elsie. Elsie's a soul trader. Exactly, with a couple of hangers on for a little bit every now and then. <laughs> and that was one of them, Alan. So yeah. if, if we are wrong, if you're listening and you're going, no, El- Alan, Alan, this is an amazing character. <laughs> what do you mean? You've missed that. It could well be that we've missed some very key We might Alan have missed scenes. some epics, epic episodes of, of uh, great Alan antics, but I'm, I'm going to bet perhaps not. Yeah, yeah. Do write in and let us know what you thought about him. Yeah. I would like to get some people's opinions of what they thought. What do you think of Alan? What did you think of him and Elsie? And um, yeah. What do you think about the fact they got married off screen? Scandalous, eh? Oh, it's terrible. But not unknown. For, okay. For, yeah. What? Okay. Yes, yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm, oh, I'm done. So I'm that's done. the end of this episode, bonus episode. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> um, write to us, conversationshit at gmail.com. Find us on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, YouTube, Spotify. We're under some rocks. If you pick up some rocks, if you keep going, the first few you won't you won't find us. But keep going, I promise you. Eventually, you will turn one one over, and we'll be there. Going, excuse me, what do you think you're doing? So, enjoy enjoy your life. Weird. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>